What up, FHN? I'm Jacob. And I'm Maddie. And on this edition of the FHN Today podcast, we'll be talking about how students feel about the school's dress code, Wi-Fi policy, and the par school's parking lot situation. Also, look on how the lack of sleep is affecting teens. And lastly, we'll talk about two students and their struggles with anxiety. But before we get watching, welcome to this edition of FHN Today TV. First up, we're going to watch a video about what it's like to live with anxiety. Yeah, let's check out this feature by Carson Adams, Taylor Perry, and Dan Coon. Anxiety attacks take everything out of you. It's kind of like an out of body experience. Your body is taking over itself and you're not even allowed to control anything. Everything gets put on hold. You can't move forward until your anxiety calms down. Whenever I have an anxiety attack, I usually isolate myself and I either like go to the bathroom, go to the guidance office if I'm here at school. Or if I'm at home, I just lay in my room, put my headphones in, and just kind of try to like chill out. I'll have like a jacket with me, I'll carry one around, and I'll kind of just like play with the sleeves or something, or wear like a long sleeve shirt so I can like mess around with the sleeves. I'll go on my phone and try and find something to do. Just try and get my mind off of things. At school, sometimes I'll even ask to go to the bathroom and just chill out in there for a little bit. Whenever the class is loud or I'm in a group work, that's when my anxiety is most. Or if I know that I have like a test next hour, then I get anxious. But it's mostly at night whenever I try to go to sleep and then it keeps me up until 4 a.m. and I have to wake up at 5 and so it's just kind of like a repeating cycle. That's whenever it can be damaging to your body. My anxiety is worse in quiet rooms. I can handle it when I'm alone, but Especially whenever I'm in like a smaller group, it just makes me really anxious. One night, I tucked my mom into bed and I wished her good night and I told my sister I loved her. I was saying goodbyes to my family because everything just kept on piling up and piling up and I wasn't reaching out for help and I truly thought I would take my life that night. And the following day, I went to a guidance office and I said I need to be institutionalized and so I was admitted into the hospital for a week. Like I want to be happy and I want to have friends. I want to be able to speak in front of people. I want to do all these things that I can't do. And that's whenever I realized that like, it's time to get help. A lot of times whenever you hear about anxiety, you want to tell the person who's anxious, like think of their happy place, think of something happy. But sometimes that doesn't work for me. Sometimes I get to the point where anything makes me anxious. I'd always kind of notice like everyone else in groups having conversations and laughing and having fun and I would always wonder like how are they doing that? Why can't I be like that? People say oh control it like you can just get over it but it's not something you can get over. People don't realize that mental illnesses are actual illnesses. It really it just kind of separates me from everyone else. Whenever I'm starting to feel like anxious I just won't really want to pay attention. I just kind of want to get my mind off of the anxiety. It's, it's hard, but you kind of get used to it sometimes, but other times it still affects you in a very strong way. Wow, that was a good video. Hey, you can't wear that in here. Oops, my bad. And let's watch a video by Maddie Chennault. Alyssa Barber and Emily Hood about students' reactions to the school's dress code policy. Distracting. Questionable. Appropriate. Targeted. Reasonable. Safe. Over sexualizing. Discriminating. Unfair. Dress code. The rule that controls what you wear and what you don't. Seems simple, right? But as fashion evolves, the administrators are finding it tough to find a dress code that suits everyone. I think they definitely can express themselves through their clothing. It just needs to make sure that it that meet some basic requirements. And so you need to make sure that it's appropriate. What do you want us to teach them to how to present themselves, that kind of thing? That's kind of more of where it comes from than trying to just 
crack down on that. And I think that it also helps to ensure that we have an appropriate learning environment where kids aren't overly distracted, kids are, 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 are comfortable within the classroom environment uh, by what others are, are, are wearing. While the administrators created the dress code with the students in mind, how do the students feel about the dress code when they're getting up and getting ready every morning? I think there's sometimes it's reasonable for them to dress code you, but a lot of the times it's kind of an unfair situation where it's kind of just like, oh, you're taking this person out of class and away from like learning, which is why they're here to tell them like, there's a problem with what they're wearing because it's distracting. I feel like there's only like a handful of kids who really care because they want to wear like, tank tops and, you know, like, maybe like crop tops, but other than that, I think the dress code's fine. While the dress code is intended to affect every student, some students believe that it could be biased. It's definitely more targeted towards girls, I feel like. I mean, girls in school are like underage and they're still young and like there's really no reason to be over-sexualizing them. It's like, yeah, everyone has different body types, but everyone still wears a shirt, you know? So I think that it's not really like discriminating or anything because clothes are clothes and the rules are the same for everyone. The students feel that the code could be improved if some small changes are made. I would change things like you can't wear hats in school because they're distracting. Or like the tank top rule kind of confuses me a bit. No one's gonna freak out and forget how to like read. I think that we should be able to maybe wear tank tops. Like what's the big deal about straps? It's kind of not very progressive, which is like we're more of a progressive society than we were than they were written. It's not a gotcha. It's, it's more just making sure that we're all in. In, in compliance with what the expectations are for for school, and that and that we're we're dressing in a way that that helps provide an appropriate learning environment for all. <laughs> oh, that was a great story, but I just haven't really been sleeping well with all these exams coming up. Yeah, I think a lot of people have been feeling that way. I think I'm just gonna stay home, catch up on some sleep tonight. Yeah, well, let's take a look on this video by Reed Pearson, Kelly Skykis, and Taylor Sheridan on how the lack of sleep has been affecting other people as well. I get like five hours of sleep a night if I'm lucky. Probably eight hours. Um, usually about eight hours or less. Like six, seven hours usually. Most nights I get around one to two hours of sleep, but if I'm lucky then it's around three or four. It, it absolutely affects the way they think, the way they study, the way they process information, the way they learn. Memory is affected when kids don't have enough sleep. If you don't get enough sleep, then your brain is not able to do those functions at night when a lot of that work takes place. And so things like um, the really ability to learn, really being able to take in information and encode it, that's affected when kids don't have enough sleep. Tired. I mean, that has to do with a lot of different things, but once again, it's the whole thing on the, you know, the way education is now and, and the amount of stress that we put on the students. And they have to stay up till 12 or 1 o'clock, and then they don't get to sleep or they're working, and then they got to stay up and things like that. So, I mean, you see kids with their head, you know, their head on their desk and, and wanting to sleep, and you hear them come in and they say, I slept last hour, and it's like, it's okay. <laughs> and I, you know, it never was okay when I was in high school, but um, yeah, I mean, I think once again, we've, we've, Put a lot of stress on the students and so they don't get the sleep that they need. I can't focus on schoolwork and I just sleep during classes. They don't focus. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing, um, their lack of focus. Um, they, their, he their heads are down, or if they're really fighting to keep their head up, they're you know, doing one of these and, and, and can't keep their eyes open, even though they're trying really hard. You can tell that they're trying really hard. Some people just give up and they just put their heads down.
usually really worn out by the end of the week. I usually can't like stay up late on Fridays. You definitely feel like at the end of the week you need to catch up on the sleep that you didn't get from homework. What do we do? We drink coffee, we drink soda to kind of get ourselves going and then we wear ourselves down and do it all over again. Oh, that was a good nap. Really? Yeah, except I almost got hit in the parking lot when I was coming back into school. Yeah, the parking lot can get pretty crazy after school sometimes. Tell me about it. So let's check out this video by Lily Sondheimer, Lupe Medina, and Kelsey Decker on other students' experiences in the parking lot. The student happened to turn in really fast to cut off the line. So they were pulling into a empty parking spot that was not empty because I was in it, but um, it happened really quickly, so I didn't really know what was happening. I kind of saw it out of the corner of my eye, and then I was on the ground. And Just walking across from the school to get into the parking lot, to my car, and kid came around the corner and hit me. It was right out here on the road outside of the school, and the how of it was I was hitting my signal to pull into the turn lane. I looked right into the turn lane, and that's when the car was coming straight at me. These are only three of the many cases involving an accident in the FHM parking lot. Victims of these accidents believe that some drivers are unaware of the consequences that reckless driving can bring. Drivers our age are a little reckless, I would say. You can hurt people, which I don't think a lot of people understand. You have people that break the rules because they have to wait too long. You have a line of cars down the street because everyone's trying to get here at the same time. And then up on the student lot, you have a lot of inconsideration for other people. It's a racetrack down there uh, by where the students park. A lot of students don't know that uh, when you're driving, a car really is a weapon, that it really can hurt people. Because of the events that took place, these students have altered their daily approach to the parking lot. Now a lot of times I, I'm looking around making sure no one's coming my way. I'm a little bit more precautious and definitely for uh, other drivers. Now I, I'm very cautious pulling out of my parking space because I know a lot of students aren't really thinking about getting into an accident. They're just thinking about leaving, getting home. There are many ways an accident can easily be avoided, especially if drivers are more aware of the consequences of their actions. You think that only, only bad people get in accidents. It's not how it works. Uh, it, you never know when you're going to be in an accident, and you don't want to be the one responsible for it. My advice would be to slow down. It will only take a couple more minutes to uh, be more safe because Getting into an accident is a big deal, and so if you just take the time to look around at your surroundings, then you can be a lot safer and hurt a lot fewer people. What's wrong? None of my Snapchats are sending. Oh yeah, that's blocked on the Wi-Fi. Why? Well, let's check out this video by Nathan Williams and Will Skaggs and find out about the school's policy. The school Wi-Fi has been a conflict among many FHN students. Most think that it's unnecessary for certain content to be blocked. Although, Mr. Down states that it can help the students' learning environment in a positive way. I feel like they, they probably are having the opportunity to learn to learn more because I think that, that sometimes some of the, the content that they were accessing was, was not appropriate content. But I think ultimately it comes down to what the student chooses to engage in. I think, you know, students learn more when they're engaged in the topic. Even though there are many benefits, there are also some downsides that affect the student's learning ability. Mrs. Stoker explains the difficulties that she's encountered while trying to educate her students. First semester I was doing like trying to do Kahoot and some of those different, you know, gaming uh, educational websites and I, I stopped doing it because I just, they kept crashing, people were getting kicked out and I just, then I, we ended up doing it on paper anyway. If you're trying to play a game like Kahoot or you can get extra credit too, it's really hard to keep up with everyone else if you have slow Wi-Fi or if you just don't have signal at all. So I don't think it does any good because the things that are distracting in the classroom have nothing to do with Wi-Fi. It's, it's devices. Wow, those are some amazing videos. Yeah, you got that right. Well, that's all we have for you this time. Make sure to come back and check out our senior edition. And I'm Jacob. And I'm Maddie. Keep it steezy, FHN. <laughs> Ooh, can you turn the screen around so I can see myself? This color.
does not work for us. Um, it works for me. Okay, it's this one. Oh, there's this one here. Like... Can I just do this podcast by myself? No. Yeah. Okay, you guys need this. I can so see Jacob as a greaser. No, I, I, I mean, no. How Italian stay in Anchor One, personalized anchor. My name is Jacob. It's been an episode of FHNLA TV. Start struggling. Okay, in reality, how many people are going to watch this? Not that many. Oh, um, my so, mom. Ew, and you did burp. I did burp. I super burped. Is this in shot? Stop.